Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We have a new coming brand to our channel that I've never checked out before, but I have heard quite a bit about these guys. They're Reverend Guitars. So, this is not sponsored by Reverend, it was actually a new Guitar Day purchase, and Sweetwater is sponsoring this episode, so we'll hear from them in a minute. But let's just go ahead and crack open this new guitar, and see what I think about a Reverend. First off, most of their guitars don't actually ship in cases. You can purchase them separately. I think on Sweetwater's website, it was between like uh, 220 to 250 So I was a little bit worried about that, but it appears just their base box that they ship out to dealers, it's actually double box. So we got that triangle box, and then like our regular box stuff going on here so that's nice because most companies just ship stuff out in these triangle boxes but let's go ahead and see how the rest of their packing is pretty standard for an overseas style import guitar you got a little block in here additional support on the headstock you've got some more layers of cardboard down here i would have liked to have seen like some foam right here but maybe that was supposed to be there and it just got popped who knows let's go ahead and get this out and grab my first impressions of what reverend calls the jet stream 390 in outfield ivy finish that's looking pretty cool this was looking really dark in the photos of these things stock wise but wow i didn't even know to expect that that was going to be a metallic flake finish that's cool i like that so besides our beautiful finish here, what else do we got going on? We have three P90 pickups, which I'm always excited about. I love triple P90 pickup guitars, but it's supposed to have a master volume, a master tone, and then something that can help shape your tone that we'll have to check out in a minute. We've got a Wilkinson trem system on these, which kind of lends to this guitar's kind of interesting aesthetic, but I've tried Wilkinson's in the past and I've been a big fan of them. As far as our pickup selecting, it looks like just regular stuff here. One, two, three, four, five positions, kind of like a strap a caster just a little bit beefier of pickups and we have a roasted maple neck but now the big thing the reason i wanted to try a reverend and when this new guitar day purchase thing just showed up is like yes finally reverend uses carina bodies on almost everything they build ever since 2007 and within the gibson realm of things that is like a sacred tone wood that only very few select 50s models got and now they're starting to reissue it and they charge crazy premiums for it but then you get reverend over here just using it on almost everything so it's kind of funny so i'll be interested to check this thing out simply because of that fact on top of all the other cool attributes so first thoughts on this thing, fit and finish wise, I mean, it just feels like a very nice gloss finish. Definitely surprised by the metallic nature of the finish. And then the neck has like a, not quite a satin, but it's like a little bit more buff than that. Personally, I'd prefer a little bit more of a raw feel, but this has a good finished feel. It looks like we have a separate fretboard and maple neck. So get a little bit of a color difference there, despite both being baked maple. The headstock, ah, I'm not a big fan of Reverend's headstock design. I mean, you can see what they're going for here, kind of Fender-esque, but they had to change it up so they don't get sued. <laughs> But their triple string tree is interesting, and their truss rod route is also kind of fascinating. So I'll have to take a look at this thing on the workbench in order to get a detailed QC assessment. But oh, hey, even look at that. They have a little bit of a sculpal way right there to help it be a little bit easier to play in the upper frets. But before we throw this thing on the workbench, how about we learn a little bit more about Reverend Guitars? This company's relatively new. They were founded in 1997, but they were sold to new owners in 2010, and that's when they kind of grew all their model selections. You started to see a bunch more signature guitars. Like, they have a signature guitar for Billy Corgan out there and Greg Koch. Greg is the first guy who even made me aware of these Reverend Guitars because he has his Gristle Masters. But the other thing that I always found interesting about this company is it's located in Toledo, Ohio. That's only like an hour away from me. However, they don't actually make Make the guitars in the USA. Most of them are made by Mer Music in South Korea. So they have them made in Korea or wherever they're currently making them today. I mean, I just took a lot of the stuff off the Wikipedia page for their company. And then they ship them to Toledo, they set them all up, and then they send them out to the dealers is the way I understand it. But the Jetstream 390 model is 1099 brand new in 2022. They're available in Outfield Ivy, Midnight Black, and Chronic Blue. However, for $100 extra, they just recently announced a new Ron Ashton model. That's pretty much this exact same thing with maybe a few tweaks, but it's in rock orange and it has a little lightning bolt design on the upper bout. Which I'll be honest, I was kind of sad we didn't get to document that one for this new Guitar Day purchase, but now that I've seen Outfield Ivy in person, I think we made our right decision here. So let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench to take a look at its individual parts and specs. 
While I'm getting this thing apart, let's hear a word from our sponsor today, Sweetwater. Sweetwater is the premier place to buy music gear and accessories, from electric guitars to strings to straps. They can even help you with band instruments now. That's something new that they're doing. My favorite thing about their company when buying electric guitars is they actually take the time to take photos of each guitar that they sell. They weigh them. You can see the flame, the wood grain patterns. They try to make buying online as easy as possible. And once you've bought something from them, they assign you a sales engineer who will take care of you for the rest of your life if you're willing to let them. And hey, they do a whole bunch of giveaways too, so you can follow that link in the description to check out their website and enter their giveaway contests. Full disclosure, they've sponsored this episode, a general episode. They have nothing to do with this guitar or this guitar review. I can say whatever I want. Now that we've got all those screws out of the way, let's take a look at this thing. So here's what our pickup routes look like in here. There's no fancy markings or anything. You really can't see the wood anywhere, except for where the screws to mount the P90 pickups are right there in the body. And knowing that there's Karina wood hiding under here, I would love to just see a natural top on one of these things, because Karina's naturally quite a beautiful wood. However, the pickups, they call them the 95A. So we get neck two, neck one in the middle position, and bridge in the bridge. They don't use mounting foams, they decide to use springs, which generally I prefer. You've got better control. And within the circuit, that bridge one reads 11.86k ohms, middle position 7.52, and about the same in the neck, 7.53. Let's see what those in-betweens look like. Alright, 3.79, then this will probably be like, what, 5-ish? Yep, 4.64. So, it appears to me that that bridge P90 is going to be extra hot for some screaming leads. So I'm looking forward to checking those things out. But as I was talking about earlier, there's a little bit more to this than just the pickups. So underneath here, it's all shielded off. That's what the route looks like. Now, as far as if you wanted to add some additional stuff in here, like get individual volumes and tones for each, that's ah, going to be difficult because there's not much room to do anything. But on top of the shielding within the body, you can also see they've shielded off the entire backside of the pick guard, which is very nice. And just in case you missed it earlier, that's a perloid material, and it's actually three ply. There is a black layer in between there. Looks quite smart. As far as the controls go, you can see regular strat style switch right there. But what I really liked about their knurled dome chrome knobs here is the fact that they do have an insert cut right out of them. So you can actually tell what position your knob's in. This is all the way on versus all the way off. But once you get used to what on and off looks like, I could see how that would definitely be helpful in aiding in sometimes the confusion that you might get on these unmarked knobs. As far as our electronics, it looks like we have some sort of a PCB system for our toggle switch. That's pretty common. And then we have Made in Korea Alpha Pots that appear to all be hand wired on this. And it looks like we got some pretty decent capacitors on there as well. But this is a master volume, master tone, and then this is what they call the BCC, the base contour control, which comes stock on, as far as I understand, nearly every single one of their models. So you can contour what this thing sounds like. So I'm not even going to try to explain it because I need to experience it myself first. I've heard some YouTube videos that sounded pretty convincing and nice. So we'll have to see how I feel about that. So pretty simple layout here. However, having three pickups and only a master volume, that kind of limits you a tad. But since you have a five-way selector switch on this, that kind of opens up your opportunities at the same time. So far, I only noticed one stripped out screw, and that was this one brand new. Now, as far as this Wilkinson trim, it's the WVS50 2K trim model. Inside the box, you get all these Allen keys that you need to adjust it. You get one to adjust your height, I'm assuming this might be intonation, but this one also secures your arm bar down using that locking nut. Then you have this one to adjust these, which I think just secures the whole bridge to the block. I'm not sure. Then you also get a large one up here for your truss rod. And then this one came with a spare one that was of a different size. Maybe it's for something that this guitar doesn't have. But we'll just take a second to appreciate this beautiful sparkle green finish. I really was not expecting it to be metallic. That was a very pleasant surprise. All the stock photos just made it look the same as the black one, so I was kind of scared what it would actually be in person, but that is probably my favorite thing about this guitar so far, is that exotic finish they've got going on here. And I was finally able to put what this model reminds me of. It reminds me of the EVH Wolfgang model. Very similar to that. It's got the roasted neck, all that. So I knew this thing looked familiar, I just couldn't quite pinpoint it. I believe it's that. But since I've never had one of these before, I'm curious, how thick is this? 
It measures 1.76 inches, so not quite as big as a Les Paul, a full-on maple top version one anyways, so kind of similar to like a Les Paul Special. And the top bout is just slightly under 10 inches, and the widest bout is about 13, so it's very similar to a Les Paul in that aspect. And in case you missed it, to match our P90 pickups, we do have a thin layer of binding around the top including a arm contour rest right there. So that's nice that you still get binding on a contoured model, nice. And then you also have a belly cut down here. So a very nicely sculpted guitar to fit you. But moving on from that Karina body, we have that roasted maple neck. As I was telling you earlier, it's a maple fretboard on top of a maple neck. We've got 22 nickel alloy frets. They look somewhere similar to medium jumbos to me. With a 25 and a half inch scale length and a familiar 12 inch radius. As far as craftsmanship goes, everything's looking nice on here. We've got awesome looking wood grain, black dot inlays. I just wish the frets would be a little bit more polished. I mean, they're not too bad, but I wonder if that's part of Reverend's whole setup policy. If they shine these things up and then again, who knows how long this sat in Sweetwater's warehouse. <laughs> I do see a small mark right there by one of the frets. But in the grand scheme of things, I would say that's very nice. But now let's look at the nut. They definitely had to do some shaping to it after it was sent to them, it looks like. But this is a material called bonite. I had never heard of it before. I'm sure it's just some synthetic bone material. But I'm measuring 1.7 inches at the nut width and then 2.04 by the 12th with a first fret neck depth of 0.84 inches. And that increases to 0.88 by the 12th, so that's a very consistent neck profile. Here's that neck profile at the 1st and the 12th fret. It definitely just widens up a little bit, but stays C-shaped. It kind of reminds me of a lot of fenders, but they call this a medium oval neck shape. By that description, I was kind of hoping this was going to be bigger. I mean, it definitely is a little bit more on the slim side. Now, moving on to our headstock. Again, I'm not a big fan of Reverend's headstock shape, but if everything else is nice, what does it really matter, right? That's what their logo looks like, and then they have a little R. Then to make truss rod adjustments really easy, they have a dual action truss rod in here, and there's just this big route out of the top that, to make it real easy to adjust that. And I really like their triple string tree design. So it's just a normal string tree as far as that goes, but they just made the bar longer so it could cross over more strings. And we have stock from the factory locking tuners. That is a nice touch with a trem system. The tuning keys are small buttons. Not my favorite, but whatever. We've got locking tuners. But now moving on to the backside, we've got a few other interesting things to learn about Reverend. They use six screws instead of four. Most bolt-on manufacturers just have the outside edge ones, but they make it extra secure with an extra two. That's a cool little calling card, I think. And there you can see that comfort carve I was talking about to make it easier to play in the higher registers, as well as your belly cut right there. And then here's what the trem system looks like without the back plate. The back plate is just like the pick guard. It's a three-ply material in this nice perloid with that black center stripe. But it has a Vera claw in here and this black block. So that's all looking pretty nice here. Not too much else to talk about except for the output jack. Take a look at that. They have their reverend stripes going on on the side. That's a nice little touch. And it's an extra secure jack. It actually has two stages. So you plug it in. That's one stage. It just kind of locks into place right there. And then you push it in further to get it all the way in. And then it's locked in there. So I think the thinking behind that is if you accidentally step on it, you might still stay plugged in, so that could be useful for a player that doesn't want a complete locking Neutrik jack. As far as the sides, nothing too fancy in that aspect. Backside of the neck also has a beautiful roasted maple color here. Lots of wood grain that I'm digging. And then back here, this is what we've got going on. Looks like a handwritten serial number. BGB number 47605. I wonder if they actually number those in Toledo when they come in. And they just have these put on in Korea. But there we can see our pin locking tuners, they call them. They just look like the, the vintage bullseye grovers to me. So far, these do feel a little bit stiffer than other locking tuners I've had. And they were a little bit more of a pain in the butt to restring. That was my first impressions of them anyways. All said and done, this one weighs eight pounds, five and a half ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. All right, let's go ahead and run through these tones. We'll start with our bridge pickup here, just see how hot that thing is. <laughs> So 
So using that bass control knob, it goes from this to this. It's almost a little bit too biting in that full on position. It's overdriving my amp. Position. It gives it a really nice single coil chime. Now I'll try that neck position. Roll that control off. So this is almost acting more like a boost. I think technically the pickup sounds like this off in general. That sounds like a normal single coil, not really P90-like. So with this all the way off, very single coil-like, Somewhere about halfway, you kind of get into that P90 territory. And then almost humbucker-like. So I guess that's one way you could kind of visualize it in your head. But now I'm curious about this middle pickup. Now we're in between positions. these two. interesting tones out of this. You can also play with your tone a bit. All right, now let's go ahead and try some distorted tones. 
Now that we know all about this Reverend 390 Jetstream, what are my final thoughts on this thing? As a guitar, it stands up very well for itself. It's got a very nice finish. I was pleasantly surprised by how nice it looked. The tonal capabilities out of this thing were quite impressive as well. If you are a player and you want, you know, a little bit of everything within your guitar, this is definitely an option for you. Even if you don't like these pickups, you can always swap them out for something else. But having this additional tone control here really helps you shape your sound depending on what you want at that particular moment. If I was just sitting around playing this guitar, I would probably just leave that in like the regular single coil position as I called it, or off. But if you need just a little bit more, you can definitely crank that up to whatever you need it as. However, ultimately, th this guitar just wasn't for me. Like, I really want to like Reverend guitars since they're so close to me, but this headstock, it's, it's just not for me cosmetically. And the neck profile on this one, uh, just a little bit too thin for my tastes. My number one complaint about this guitar, though, has to be these locking tuners. They're so stiff, it almost hurts my hand to turn them. Like, I have to anchor the neck and then turn it, or else it's, like, just destroying my wrists. But it's possible I could loosen those up a little bit using these screws. And the way this guitar sits on a strap, it, it wasn't very comfortable to me. But sitting down and playing it, I did find it was more comfortable. But I'm not going to write off Reverend guitars yet. I would still like to try one of those Gristle Masters out because I think that looks really cool. So maybe it's just this body shape that doesn't quite jive with me. But spec wise, this thing is a lot of fun. Roasted maple neck and fretboard with a Karina body, triple P90 pickups. If you see one at a store that you're at, you might as well give it a try. You never know if you're going to like something or not. All right, Troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.